Okay, so this is an order of operations problem. The problem with the absolute value sign that you can tell from looking at it whether it's opening or closing. So even though it's a grouping symbol, it's a little bit more difficult than a regular parenthesis. So the first thing that you, we should do is to pair them up. The first one clearly opens. The last one clearly closes. In between, it's kind of a mess, but this and this cannot be a, a pair because just a minus sign inside inside of the absolute value that is that is meaningless so if this cannot be a pair that means that with this opening this cannot open the next one so this this one closes the first one and then one opening one closing and so now it's more visible that we work out what's in this absolute value, we work out what's in this absolute value, we take the absolute values and then we subtract. Because if this is a, an order of operations problem, we're going to make only one step for each line. So the first thing that we're going to do is negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11. Now the absolute value of negative 11 is just 11. So from 11, we subtract the absolute value of 20. The absolute value of 20 is 20 but we're still subtracting it. So the answer is negative nine. Okay, let's see this next one. So again, we will start with pairing up the absolute value signs. This double one, this cannot be a pair clearly. So because it's at the end, this is closing a pair and this is closing another pair. And then it can only be meaningful if they are nested into each other like so. And using colors or making one absolute value sign bigger than the other makes, makes the structure of the problem more visible. So what do we have? We have the absolute value of what we get when we take negative three, we subtract eight, and we subtract whatever the absolute value of 11 plus nine is. Okay, so let's do it. Absolute values function as parentheses, so we're going to have to first work out the innermost parentheses. We're going to just copy the rest. 11 plus 9 is 20, and the absolute value of 20 is 20, but we're still subtracting it. So now we are at negative 3, subtract 8, further subtract 20, and when you're done, take the absolute value. Negative 11 minus 20 is negative 31 and the absolute value of negative 31 is 31. So the first thing we're gonna do is pair up the absolute value signs. It's also useful if we make sure that we can read what's a one and what's an absolute value sign. Okay, so again, this cannot be a pair, which means that because they're at the end, that they must, both of them must be closing. And then the only way this makes sense, if the one that closes later starts earlier, so they are sort of nested in, inside each other. You should not start the problem without figuring this out, otherwise you're, we're not going to understand it. If you just look at this red absolute value sign as one item, what do we have here? We have the absolute value of what we get when we start with negative 3 and we subtract 8 times whatever this is. So there is a multiplication here between 8 and the absolute value sign indicated by nothing. Okay, so let's start. First, we have to work in the innermost parentheses. Negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2. Let's still color them. So now from negative 3, we subtract 8 times the absolute value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is just 2. Now we do the multiplication. Now the subtraction. And so we have the absolute value of negative 19, which is 19. All of these problems have the same objects and the same, same signs. It's just the varying locations of the absolute value signs that, that makes the problem completely different. For example, this next one. So this problem is almost identical to this previous one here. The only difference is that here the absolute value sign is after the 8, here it's before. And that's going to completely change the entire problem. So again, we start by pairing up the parentheses. This cannot be a pair. Therefore, it must be closing both pairs. 
And so we have these two absolute value signs nested inside each other. So absolute value sign, we have 8 minus 11 plus 9. We perform that. When we're done, we take the absolute value. And when we're done, we're going to subtract that from negative 3. And finally, we'll take the absolute value of the result. So that's the plan. 8 minus 11 is negative 3. Negative 3. If you don't have colors, you can make one of the absolute value signs much bigger than the other one. So we're still working in the innermost absolute value sign, which also functions as a grouping symbol. Negative 3 plus 9 is 6. So from negative 3, we subtract the absolute value of 6. The problem is getting really short. The absolute value of 6 is 6. So from negative 3, we're subtracting 6. That means we, are, we have the absolute value of negative 9, which is 9. Notice how different the operation is, just because that little move of the absolute value sign. Here we have a multiplication, here we have a subtraction where 8 is inside the absolute value sign. So this, this minus is not about the 8 anymore, like it was in the previous one. Just like before, we're going to start by pairing up the absolute value signs. This cannot be a pair, therefore, because they are at the end, they both are closing a pair, and then the one that starts first have, has to finish last, so we have two pairs of absolute value signs nested in each other. What this says is we take negative 3, and we're going to multiply by whatever we get when we take the absolute value of minus 8, minus 11, plus 9, and when we're done, we take the absolute value of the result. So that's the plan. And because absolute value signs also function as parentheses, we're going to have to work inside the inner absolute value sign until we work that down to a single number. Negative 8 minus 11 is negative 19. So what we have is negative 3 times the absolute value of negative 10. The absolute value of negative 10 is plus 10. So we have the absolute value of negative 3 times 10, which is the absolute value of negative 30, which is 30. That's it. Thank you for watching.